foresee us maintaining our 10% or maintaining close to our 10% in light of the fact that in less than 20 some odd years that those 406 units credit goes away? Um, I don't you know. know that, I, I, I can't say that I have, that I see it as a definitive plan, but I certainly would not see that it's not on the table. Because what I do see is as we go forward, we have a lot more control and, and it's a lot more of our decision about where this goes as opposed to being told where it's going to go. We've already lost a big chunk of commercial property in Bluff Ave, which was, that was all zoned highway business and now it's all housing. We had no say, we couldn't stop it. Those are the kinds of things that we don't want to happen. Those are the kinds of things Mr. Jones is talking about. We don't want to be giving up that land uh, just because it's available. If, we, if we're going to make a decision about a piece of property like that, it should be one that we make that's in the best interest of the town, not in the best interest of a developer or in the best interest of uh, DHCD for just to create affordable housing. What about the best interest of the property owner now is, is what I'm looking at because what happens is a developer is going to go in and make an offer on a property based on so many lots. Could be $150,000 a lot raw, so if they get six right. lots, it's 900000 bucks they pay for land. Right. So now what happens is, under the scenario that's proposed, is that they're going to have to dig into their pockets really deep to meet this affordable need. So the property owner is going to have to pay and the developer is going to have to pay. Because and the reason I came down here for up is because when I was watching this on TV and I didn't have the opportunity to make the planning board's meeting, but you were discussing, you know, what's the difference with the condos? Well, basically the condos all look the same from the outside. And that was a part mandated by, um, you know, through the process of 40B, 40 that you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now what we're looking at is a subdivision, which is totally different to these condos. So if you take a look at, you know, let's say the developer's land cost with the road in is $250,000 for the cost of the lot. Then he has to build a house on it. So nobody builds small houses anymore because the land cost is so high. So let's say they put a 4,000 square foot house up instead of the 5,000 that they were doing a few years back. So that house is gonna cost close to $400,000 at least. So now they're into that project for 650 into that one house, of which they would hope to sell for, let's say, $800,000. Well, they can't afford to build an $800,000 house and sell it as a low income, or affordable, I should say, uh, for $200,000. They're gonna lose 600 grand, $500,000. And you can't take, again, and create a subdivision with six lots, uh, five lots, so you have five 4,000 square foot houses and then put a three bedroom ranch in it or a new cape or something like that of 1,300 square feet. Because that's gonna have an impact on the, on the values of that neighborhood. So, and I really do applaud the efforts of the planning, planning commission. They've been doing a lot of work trying to come up with the solutions for this. Um, I think they're on the right track to coming up with the solution. I just don't know that this is it. And I think that, you know, a little more time and effort put into it and I'm more than happy to work with them on it to try to come up with a little more of a creative way to to, to help the situation. Because the town does have a substantial amount of lots that the town owns that are buildable lots. They may not be 40,000 square feet, they might be 15,000, 10,000, 20,000. And if there is a way to take in, in, in maybe when a developer comes in, instead of saying we want you know, a $250,000 lot with a, a house on it, set up some, some type of a, a number that say, okay, you want to come to the subdivision, you pay so much a lot. And that fee is going to go towards building houses on the on lots that we already own. Doesn't, the land doesn't cost anything. Basically, the, the problem is getting the money to, to, uh, to build the homes. Did, didn't I hear that that's part of it's the... It's an option. Well, that's an option. Right. 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 But, but, but they look at this, they look there's at the developer write a check for uh, almost $200,000. There's a couple One of points here that, that, first of all, I mean, it, it's speculative, the numbers, because really, what a piece of property sells for is more market-driven and economy-driven than it is uh, by anything else. In the past, we've seen many projects where the developers are, uh, without this law have gone toes up. Um, and, and so there's no, so, so if they had none yeah. of these things against them and they went bankrupt anyway. So, so this would pretty much guarantees it then? Well, no, what I'm saying is that, 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 what I'm saying is that it doesn't, that it, that it, the mistakes of, of a developer can be far more costly than having this in place. I mean, if, if, if a piece of property is bought with the understanding that this is the way this is the way that it works, as in the other third of the communities in this state, then, uh, and they're still developing, they're still building, so it doesn't stop them 
I mean, this is a, it becomes a matter of how the property gets sold. And, and right now, um, that piece of property that five, three or four years ago, they might have sold for a million dollars, right? They could get $200,000 for it now because there's nobody buying. There's nobody right. building. So the valuations are far more driven by the market by the economy. Mm -hmm. I just bought a lot in my example. neighborhood for $225,000 and bulldo bulldozed the house and are putting the house in the market for $600,000 and it defies logic, but maybe they're going to sell it. Yeah. I, don't know what this, I don't know what they're doing, but yeah. it's uh, on the market for $600,000. We've been beating around, around, around yeah. the bush for uh, over an hour now on this issue. Uh, I'd like to get a kind of sense of where the board is. I, 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 at this yeah. point, I, I'm not prepared to, uh, to support it I'm also, I'm also not prepared to throw in the wastebasket. I just don't have enough information. I, I, I'd like to digest some of it. Uh, I'm almost of the opinion that we're better off with the 40 Bs than what we've been doing in the past because, one, it allows us to accumulate uh, affordable housing at a, at a faster rate. You know, I, you know, I'm also of the opinion that you know I, I know 20 years out or whatever the time frame is when the apartment uh, uh, credit goes away, right? That's probably a bigger problem downstream. But maybe by then we'll be further built out and it won't be as as, as big a problem. But right now I look at it as we were 406 and now we're down to 24, 24 or 25. We ought to be able to manage that. Uh, maybe we can find some more apartments and. Uh, Knock it off all in one shot. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but I don't. I think it's wrong that other members on this board got an opportunity to talk about this very important issue, and now you're going to just summarize it, and we're going to move on. I think no, is unacceptable. No, it's up to the board. I'm just well, trying to get a sense of what the board is. I mean, because just that last comment alone is upsetting. Okay, because I don't think what we've done so far is working. You know, I, don't, I think everybody's passing over the fact that we have a massive drain on our resources, the way we've been doing business thus far, okay? Edgewater, Edgewater is not, has not worked out, I think, the way we had all planned that was supposed to work out. That's well, where do you get that information? No, oh, it's not, not true. It's not true? No, 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 my estimation. No. So have you talked to the police station? Have you talked to the police chief about the, the resources that they've had to allocate? Have you talked to the schools and how many more students have arrived that were completely outside the planning of that. All these other things uh, that, you, that you cost money that the developer has absolutely no yeah. cost associated with. You don't have all the facts regarding that. Oh, I, I, I don't I, think I, you I, have I, all the facts associated with it. I, you know, you, it's easy for you to say that, and you know what? I think it's wrong. Maybe, maybe we need to explore that. As I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I have my facts right. You've heard the chairman of the CPC say those exact words, the drain on the resources. I don't think he's just making that up. So the fact is, the way we're doing 40B isn't working either. So just to throw this one away and continue to go on the road we're on, I think is wrong too. And then why is it, why is the ZBA haven't been involved in this anyways from the beginning? I just I find it surprising. That's not a ZBA function. Yeah. The ZBA has been a part of what? This whole discussion. Um, I actually bumped into Heidi last month, and I knew nothing about it until I went to her office and she told me about it, correct? Yes. And I just found out about it. I was unable to go to the meeting, so that's why. I mean, that's it. okay, and that's why I just offered. I'd be more than happy to work with yeah, them. I, down I'm the road. shocked that you didn't know about it. I have to say, unless I'm naive to how the the process is working. All right. Uh, it's actually a planning. It's actually a planning board function to put these forward, and, and the board feels there's more of a of, of a place to get. If there was something wrong with it, where, where a particular one. Uh, uh, created a problem, then it would go to the board. But, but, the board said, but, but, not, by, the token, but the same token, if I may, when we have one that requires board of appeals action in order to make it work, we send it to him to work. I mean, right. it's we, we typically work them out. This one here kind of just fell through the yeah, yeah. cracks a little bit. And but in the past, it's worked perfectly. Yeah, we we've, we've never really had any issues yeah. in the past. But you know, you use an example that you're actually doing this right now yeah. in one of these subdivisions. Well, a second subdivision well, yeah. in the world. Oh, so you had a builder that actually signed up to do but this. In that particular, but that in that particular case, the developer was getting like 14 to 1,500 feet of road, which they typically would have, wouldn't have gotten. Again, right. that's a case that he, the developer got something. Right. right. Correct? Right. Okay. But sure. You're saying okay, but the thing is, what they're proposing, the developer's getting nothing. Well, but, no, there's but a lot there, of flexibility. There, there is that. flexibility, Paul. Yeah. If you buy, if you buy, that's basically saying that 
If you're getting six lots, one of them goes to the town for affordable, correct? Doesn't say anything about giving you waivers or anything, but does no, it? No, we can't do that only because I, you, we, we'd have to change our subdivision regulations for Mitchell Town. We can't waive subdivision regulations in the zoning bylaw. That's, I, so I, they're waiving, you know what I mean? I, so they're waiving I the reason there's a five member board is because not all situations are the same, right. and it gives us that opportunity to look at one and do what's best for the town. And in this, and in, in, in also to work with the developer as we have on the last couple subdivisions, to, to provide, because we provided affordable units for the last But, the, but he has an ex exact point. You're getting an affordable yep. out of this developer. Yep. He's getting a longer road, yep. and you don't even need this bylaw change, right. correct? Right. So why do you need to change it? Because they want to make, I, I think the difference is, they want to make yeah, it mandatory. It was optional, they want to make it mandatory. Yeah. Well, I understand, but I'm saying, why do you need to make it mandatory if they've already done it in the past? Yeah, there, there, are, there are different facets to it, but one of the things it does is that, again, it, it shows DCHD that we have that we're committed to meeting the obligation. Now. Can I, how many? How many? Um, what do you anticipate? Based upon what you know, as far as the lands, the tracts of lands that are left, how many more subdivisions do you anticipate could be proposed under a current zoning of six or more? I, I think it's difficult to say, but there are. Well, I, I would like to know. I mean, if that's what we're doing. I'd like to know, it might be what is it affecting? Say. It might be difficult to say because it depends on where they are. While we have all those nope. acres, if you go into um, some of our, uh, our, um, our, some of our subdivision our rules and regulations require three acre zoning, like up in the McIntyre area. So, so you got a three acre lot up there as opposed to uh, half acre lots if you get to RA, so, I mean RB. So, you know, you'd, you'd have to but under this proposal, under this proposal, if there's a three-acre lot up in McIntyre, yeah. you would have the flexibility to say, "Go ahead, build three houses." Oh, oh excuse me, no. build six houses, but one of them has to be affordable. Uh, no, they need, they need twenty acres no. to do that. No, we can do. Uh, no, we can do. We can uh, use for the affordable. We can have a minimum ten thousand square foot lot. Right, so that's, I mean, there, there are some, uh, there's an ability for you to, to waive the density requirements under the current zoning that's right. if there's an affordable aspect to it. Right. So, for No, instance. not on the current zoning. Uh, no, no, on what you're proposing here. No, yes, yes what we're proposing here. With what you're proposing. So yes. I'm saying, you've got a three acre vo vacant lot up in McIntyre, yeah. Yeah. and someone comes in and says, listen, I like this, so I'll pay my $850,000 for that lot on $900,000, and I'll build six units and give you one for, for affordable. Those numbers work, right? Well, you couldn't do that. Why not? So you could. Under your proposal, you could. No, I, no, I think it's so what you would do is you would, would split off a one, you split off one lot, and uh, that could be sized. There are some there are some technical reasons why that 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 uh, that area has three acres only, and that's is that the soils are not great. So the what you need for septic systems up there is a lot. Okay. More. Well, I think he's talking hypothetical. I'm looking at you. I have so I have a bunch of I got this. Today. Just, I have a bunch of notes written down here as far as the, the you know, the, the density. The other thing, you know, you, you talk about parking, where you, you actually could waive some of the parking requirements. If it were a multifamily type deal, you could waive some of the parking requirements. Yeah, for the but, but what? For that, for that, for the affordable unit. For the affordable unit. But is that? In, in my question is, if that's the case, does that mean our current zoning? for parking requirements is overly restrictive right now, if we can waive things like that. Because right now, I don't think we're overly restrictive on what we're requiring for well, the parking that's space. Not what, that's not what that does. What that does is that, I, I know, but what it does is, is, is if you read the rest of it, it says there has to be uh, adequate parking uh, provided. There has to be parking. I know, but, the, but it site. leaves you the discretion as to what's, what's deemed to be adequate. And, that, and it's there because of the fact that we're, we're allowing the, the, the affordable units to be on a reduced size lot, and, and so that, so that not all of the lot will be impervious, if you will. In a smaller lot like that, we, you can still have landscaping in a good amount of pervious area and, and less driveway, less hot top, and parking in another location. I mean, it's, it's all, it, it all fits together. Mr. Chair? Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, you might, we've been on this for a, a long time, but I suggest that either A, we bring it to a vote now, or we just postpone it and make our decision at uh, town meeting. Well, the thing, I, I think we need a lot more discussion on this particular matter, personally. I mean, I'm for affordable housing. I spent a lot of time on affordable housing. I just have a lot of unanswered questions, and I, and I don't think I need to 
or should we do it a one-on-one offsite? I mean, the board should be hearing the discussion.